Good day everyone. Before I start, let me first introduce myself. I am Jasmine B. Lotivio of BSE 2D. Today, I will discuss things about aquatic ecosystem. Aquatic ecosystems connect people, land, and wildlife through water. Let us first define aquatic ecosystem. An aquatic ecosystem is an ecosystem in a body of water. It includes oceans, lakes, rivers, streams, estuaries, and wetlands. Within these aquatic ecosystems are living things that depend on the water for survival, such as fish, plants, and microorganisms. These ecosystems are fragile and can be easily disturbed by pollution. All living things within an ecosystem share the same watershed. A watershed is an area of land over which water flows to reach a common body of water such as a lake or pond. We all live in a watershed or drainage basin. Watersheds can be as large as the Mississippi River drainage or as small as a farm with a pond. Your watershed may be made up of mountains, farms, houses, businesses, or towns. You share your watershed with all the living things within the ecosystems. There are two types of aquatic ecosystem. First is the freshwater ecosystem, and it includes lakes, ponds, freshwater, rivers, and streams. The second one is the marine ecosystem. It includes abyssal plain, areas like deep sea coral, whale falls, and brine pools. Polar regions such as the Antarctic or the Arctic and coral reefs, the deep sea, such as the community found in the abyssal water column, the hydrothermal vents, kelp forest, mangroves, the open ocean, and the rocky shores. Freshwater ecosystems are characterized by non-saline water or water without salt. Freshwater ecosystems such as rivers and lakes cover less than 1% of the surface of Earth but are home to many vulnerable species of plants and animals, including 41% of all species of fish. The largest water ecosystem is the marine ecosystem, covering 70% of the Earth's surface and are located in oceans and seas around the world and provide habitat for a wide variety of specialized organisms from tiny plankton to a huge whales. Marine water or salt water is present in a vast majority of aquatic environments. Marine ecosystems are greatly impacted by water depth, temperature, and light availability. The main difference between freshwater and marine ecosystem is the salinity or the saltiness of the water present in that ecosystem. The amount of salt in water greatly impacts the types of species that can live in a particular aquatic environment. So how important water is to people? Water connects every aspect of life. People rely on water, as water used in home, for agriculture, and for industry. Water can even be used to generate electricity, and not everyone in the world has access to a clean drinking water. As of today, there are 785 million people or 1 in 9 persons lack access to safe water. The way people use fresh water can be divided into three groups. First is for agriculture, second is for industry, and third is for domestic use. Water use in agriculture. Water is a critical input for agriculture. As the human population increases, so too does our use of land for growing food. To make food, we need water. The uses within the sector are very diverse and, in, and it include mainly irrigation, pesticide, and fertilizer application, and even sustaining livestock. Irrigation is the artificial watering of land that does not get enough water through rainfall. 
So irrigation is probably the most important use of water. Currently, agriculture accounts for 70% of all fresh water withdrawals globally. Water is also used for food preservation, crop cooling for example, and processing. Water use in industry. It's about 20% of fresh water is used for industries that produce things like metals, wood, paper products, chemicals, petrol, and oil. Probably, every manufactured product uses water during some part of the production process. Industrial water use includes water used for such purposes as fabricating, processing, washing, diluting, cooling, or transporting a product, incorporating water into a product, or for sanitation needs within the manufacturing facility. One of the larger industrial water users is for electrical generation. Water use in domestic. Domestic water use includes indoor and outdoor uses of residences and it accounts the remaining 10% of fresh water. And it includes uses such as drinking, food preparation, bathing, washing clothes and dishes, flushing toilets, watering lawns and gardens, and maintaining pools. Domestic water use includes potable and non-potable water provided to households by a public water supplier, or the domestic deliveries, and self-supplied water use. Self-supplied domestic water use is typically withdrawn from a private source such as a well or captured as rainfall or rainwater in a cistern. So this graph shows the increasing demand of water worldwide. Increasing water demand follows population growth, economic development, and changing consumption patterns. Global demand has increased by 600% over the past 100 years. Global water demand for all uses presently about 4,600 cubic kilometer per year will increase by 20% to 30% by 2050 up to 5,500 to 6,000 cubic kilometer per year. Always remember that if we all use water wisely, we can make sure that there is enough clean fresh water to support people as well as plants and animals. We all know that humans use lots of water. We need it for various activities including agriculture, transport, washing, and recreation. Most important, we need it to drink fresh water to stay alive. Today, in many regions around the world, fresh water comes straight to where we need it. But in some places, people must carry gallons of water from the closest stream, river, lake, or well to their homes. Access to a water and the ability to move water from its sources to where it is needed are important considerations for any groups making decisions about where they should build their homes and cities. This was also true in the past. Ancient villages, towns, and cities were located near fresh water sources like rivers, lakes, and oases. So, and in, in addition, People often built reservoirs and tanks to collect rainwater. There is only limited supply of water on earth. Therefore, we must look after it. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've learned something.